right, welcome back to uh, this playlist of questions. I've been getting some great questions coming in through my website submission form, so it's time to address them with some more videos. So this next question says, I know the focus of your diet is high fat, and I've been getting great results from this. My question is, during your long training runs of two plus hours, are you doing these without food the entire time? or are you using carbs or fat only during training runs? I've seen your nutrition during races, but not sure I have seen anything that addresses this. Thanks in advance. All right, this is a great question, and I, I tend to kind of break it into a few different categories, uh, or at least try to provide some context, because uh, I personally don't do the same exact thing every time. And most of the folks that I'm coaching or working with typically don't either, especially as we're trying to kind of fine tune things for them for whatever race they're trying to build up for. So to start out with, uh, typically for any run, long run or otherwise, I won't really take in much more than water and electrolytes or anything but water and electrolytes. So the exception to this would be like, during a long training run where I'm going to be going back out the next day to do another long training run, or if I have a couple hard sessions in a row, uh, those type of training days, sometimes I'll take in some fat during it just because I've been trying to avoid racking up such a big calorie deficit during that first day so that I'm not, you know, as deep into that calorie deficit come the second day. Uh, and the reason sometimes I'll do fat with that is because uh, oftentimes I won't be necessarily doing speed sessions or anything during those training ones. Those would tend to be you know, back to back long runs where I'm just out there for a long period of time and I'm eating into the potential feeding, refeeding time frame. And then there just tends to be less time in between those sessions than there would maybe be in a more traditional uh, sub ultra marathon training program. So for those type of things, I like to do stuff like uh, there's a company called F-Bomb. They make these like nut butter sachets where they use MCT oil and macadamia nuts to make like a slightly, it's kind of like a liquidy nut butter consistency. So stuff like that is kind of what I'll focus on on those days when I am using fat to take in during uh, a long run like that. The, the reason I don't do that on a regular basis is because... Uh, I've talked about this before on podcasts and things that really my goal when it comes to digestion during a run itself from the fat side of things is to tap into body fat. And the reason for that is because I'm avoiding digestion by doing that. And you're avoiding any of the potential pitfalls that have come to be known when trying to eat and exercise at the same time. So fat being your unlimited fuel source in the activity itself that you can easily replace afterwards I try to rely more on body fat for that. That's what I'm going to be doing more so on race day. So I tend to lean that way in training as well. Um, then it comes to a point where you get to a part of your training block where, or your training plan where it becomes important to start practicing what you're going to do on race day itself. So on race day, since I do like a slow drip of carbohydrates, uh, depending on the distance and intensity, you know, usually that's between 20 to 40 grams per hour. Uh, I'm going to start to kind of practice what I'm going to do during race day uh, just to, you know, remind myself like how to go through the routine, make sure the same program still works as well as it did the last time and uh, just to kind of get everything dialed in. So when I'm doing this, when I'm working with someone, usually what we'll do is we'll start to plan out backwards from the race itself. And when I'm starting to look into kind of crunch time, for practicing race day fueling when we get about six weeks out from your taper. So the reason I look at six weeks out is because that kind of gives us more or less six opportunities to do two things with both race fueling practice as well as kind of testing your level of fat adaptation and what maybe your needs for in race fueling will be. Uh, so with those six weeks, I break them into two different categories. Uh, one of those categories is your practice of your in-race fueling strategy. So this is where I would try to do exactly what your plan would be for race day. Uh, it maybe doesn't have to be in the quantity that you're going to take in, but at least be practicing what fuel sources you are going to take in. So if you have a specific sports drink or a specific fuel that you really like to use as your kind of a fuel source on race day, this is what I would advocate using during 
three of those six final long runs. Um, the other three I use as kind of like a fat adaptation field test. And I call it a field test because you're actually doing the activity that you're going to be participating in. And this is just to kind of test to see where you are at in terms of uh, being able to use fat as a fuel source, a primary fuel source. So for these long runs, I'll just do water and electrolyte, like what I did a lot in the beginning, just to kind of see like how good am I feeling without taking in a calorie source during a long run. Uh, so that's kind of what I'll do at the end. And six is kind of just like a, a number that I'll use as this is the minimum amount of time. If you want to practice this more or stretch that out further into your training, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, but that's how I do it. That's how I fuel during training. That's how I kind of prepare myself for race day. And that's how I uh, use a fuel test to, to look at how fat adapted I am. Uh, and a lot of that is because when I look at fat adaptation, I'm not looking at it as an optimization in terms of getting as fat adapted as I possibly can get. If I wanted to get as fat adapted as I could possibly get, I would avoid carbs altogether. Um, that's not my goal. My goal is performance. So I'm getting as fat adapted as I need to get for the specific event. And that's going to be based a lot of on a lot of individual factors as well as um, event factors. Some individual factors are going to include, well, how well do you digest food while running? In the ultra marathon running community, we see this all the time. Some people can be seemingly eating the entire event, no stomach issues, nothing. Other people, they go much past a gel per hour and you know they're on the side of the trail or side of the road puking. So there's a lot of individual variance in terms of what people are able to tolerate. Other factors play a role too. Like if it gets really hot, it becomes harder to eat. It becomes more important to stay on top of hydration and things like that. So considering your own personal situation as well as the environmental factors can determine you know, how fat adapted you feel you need to get for a specific ultra endurance event. All right, folks, uh, thanks for checking out this video. If you have any questions that you'd like me to address on this specific playlist that is just designed for me answering questions that you have, please reach out to me on my website at ZachBitter.com, on social media, Instagram, at ZachBitter, or Twitter, at ZBitter.